take the work of the Lord uh, for granted because whatever we communicate we have to communicate what he says not what's in us I have to inquire over and over again before I can actually communicate something to the people of God because God cares about his people so much he doesn't just want to give them junk so when you see people coming on at least me for sure I have to ask the Lord what it is that I need to talk about today we're going to talk about the gifts, the talents, and the callings of God, and uh, its effectiveness. I'm gonna lower this volume. And its effectiveness. Hallelujah. Because we all know that um, whatever that we do, we do it unto the Lord. We all know that um, we can't just do something just for the sake of doing it. There must be fruit. There must be results. Uh, in whatever that we are doing because we're not doing things just for the sake of doing it and one of the things that you need to understand about the call I have been called into is to help people by the Spirit of God to discover their purpose to discover their assignment to discover their call because a lot of people are living they don't even know why they are living. They don't even understand why they are living. It's one thing not knowing why you are living, but it's another not understanding. I'm not going to go into that. But today I want us to talk about the gifts and the callings and the talents of God. Why is this subject so important? This subject is important for every human being because that's a very essence for our existence that is the very ex essence the very reason for our living on earth before you know before we are formed in our mother's womb we, we, we were created by God in his image and likeness and uh, and, and and then the reason for our existence is dominion he told us to be fruitful and multiply replenish the earth and have dominion so in order to have dominion i do believe that is so closely related to each and every one of us discovering our purpose i always use the word discovering our purpose because a purpose is not something that you need to find it's something that you need to discover it's not something that you need to seek for you seek the kingdom of god it's not the purpose that you are seeking you seek the kingdom of God and then he reveals his purpose for your life or he reveal your purpose according to him for your life so that you can live a fruitful life so that you can live a life pleasing to God glory to God so one of the things that I, I need to help you understand that we're not just living just for the sake of living after we have been created in the image of God and likeness we have been given a mandate a mandate of dominion like I said you know that's another you know topic altogether which I have done in the past I probably need to do it again to help people come to an understanding of what the whole thing is about I we, I talked I think yesterday or two days ago about um, Jeremiah that uh, you know before he was formed in his mother's womb which applies to each and every one of us that before he was formed he already knew so to help you understand that that which we are called to do everything that we are called to do is already predestined for us it's already there for us all we have to do is to discover now I want us to talk about it. and and today I want us to go to the book of Isaiah chapter uh, six to help us understand like last time I talked about 
um, the gifts and the calling of God, why people um, are, are actually prospering, or it seems like they are prospering, why they are outside of the call of God. The conclusion of what I said, what I said to them, I said, I said to the people, that is because of the grace of God. But until, in order for you to be effective in that which you are called to do, when you have discovered it, when when you have discovered it, when you are in God, you need to understand what I'm about to read here according to Isaiah chapter number six. We see Isaiah here receiving a call of God. He first experiences God, but I'm going to start from verse four. Um, yeah, from verse four, from verse four. Glory to God. Forgive me. Let me just, uh, I, should, I should always be ready. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And then he says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He was sitting on his throne, high and exalted, and his robe filled the whole temple. Around him, flaming creatures were standing, each of, each of which had six wings. Um, and then he, he responded and said, he said, there is no hope for me. I am doomed because every word that, pass, that passes my lips is sinful. And I live among a people whose every word is sinful. And yet with my own eyes, I have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of them, one of the creatures flew down to me carrying a burning coal that he had taken from the altar with a pair of thongs. Hallelujah. He touched my lips with the burning coal and said, this has touched your lips and now your guilt is gone and your sins are forgiven. Then I heard the Lord say, whom shall I send? Who will be our messenger? I answered, I will go send me. So he he told me to go and give the people this message hallelujah now we want we want to we want to understand what god is doing we already understood that we all created in the image of god for dominion and then the formation is all about the purpose that we we have to operate in the purpose of god why are we living why do we have breath under our nose? Why are we breathing every day? Like I said, one of the calls that I'm called to do is to help people discover their purpose. Hallelujah. And why is it so important for people to discover their purpose? It's important for people to discover their purpose because when we look at the kingdom scripture in a, in a, and Matthew 25, they are talking about, Jesus here is making a parable about different things. And one of the things that he talked about was the talent. And then he said he gave one the talent, one talent, and then he gave the other one two talents, and then he gave the other one about ten talents. And then we also see that the one that had one talent, he decided to go and hide it under wherever he, he hid it, basically. And then the, the one who had two talents, was he multiplied the talent that he had been given and the one who had five talents he also did the same thing he multiplied the talent he made it more he made it fruitful and he multiplied from that talent hallelujah and then he goes on to say then um and then the one who had ten talents he also was given another talent you also multiply the talent and then you will also hear jesus saying who much is given much will be required so based on the call that we have based on what god has put in our hands to be stewards of hallelujah we have a responsibility to steward it very well this is why we need to submit to submit it to god though we have been called according to god we've been called for such a time as this for what for whatever reason that we have been called but all you have to do is to discover your purpose. And I talked last time about him. Uh you know that though we, we didn't need to repent before our gifts are in operation because it's the grace of God it's something God cannot take away but now we know we're not talk today about how do we get these gifts and talents to be effective because people can have talents and gifts and they're not really effective I am one of those people that I may have had talents and gifts prior to myself you know coming to America and discover and go, going to England going to, to, to all these places but I never 
I, I, I was never effective in the gifts that were, were on the inside of me. Why was I not effective? The reason I was not effective is because I was missing something. What is it that I was missing? We see here when Isaiah, we see Isaiah here being touched, being, being in, he's now in the presence of God. He is now being touched by the fire of God. He's seeing an angel touching his lips with the coal of fire. So that means everything has got to do with the fire. We also know that Jesus Christ himself, according to Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, this is what John said in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, that he will baptize us with water, but there's one coming after him. He will baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. We know that the fire does the purification. Even myself, a perfect example is myself. Before I discovered what I was called to do, what I was gifted in, what I had talent in order to serve the world, I had to be touched by the fire. I got touched by the fire in 2014, not understanding what is all this fire about. I had never heard anything about the fire. But when the fire of God touched me, this is when I began to operate in the gifts and the talents and the callings of God. But I didn't know that was that's what was missing because I was never taught that. And that's okay because people don't have to know everything. We have to learn different things in different places. So we also see that the fire is a necessity for us to be effective in the gifts and the callings of God. As long as you have not, you haven't received that fire to touch you, either touching your lips so that you will not, you no longer speak the things that you were used to speak in the past hallelujah now you begin to speak the things of God remember he says in his word let the confession of your mouth and the meditation of your heart hallelujah be holy and pleasing unto God it means like we hear Isaiah there in, in, in chapter 6 verse 4 he says, he is a man of unclean lips. He is dwelling amongst the people of unclean lips. So he is recognizing his problem there. In order for him to operate as a prophet, what the Lord needed to do there, hallelujah, was to touch his lips with the fire of God so that every impurity in that, in that tongue will be removed and removed by the fire of God, hallelujah. So I experienced the same thing even myself. I had to be dipped into the fire of God, hallelujah, in order for me to begin to operate and operate fully in the things of God, according to God. It's one thing operating in the things that are, that are of the world. We will not, those things that are not going to get you anywhere, but the most important thing for you is to operate in the things of God, having been touched by the fire of God. We see this fire in operation not only in myself, we see this fire in operation with Isaiah, hallelujah. We see this fire before he can actually operate in the call of God as a prophet to speak the holy things of God. His tongue had to be cleansed by the fire of God as long as his tongue was not cleansed. Hallelujah. By the fire of God, there's no way he will be effective in that gifting and the calling. Hallelujah. He was called into. So there was a specific tangible reason there that Isaiah had to be touched by the coal of fire in his lips. Hallelujah. So that everything can just change around so that he'll begin to speak the holy things of God. Your call is a holy call because you are created by God. God. Like I said last time, I said we see a lot of people that have been operating in the gifts. They're using these gifts in the world. But the reason really they have the gifts is for them to give these gifts back to God. Remember, who much is given, much will be required. Required by who for who? Required for God by God. Back to God. Hallelujah. So all we have to do right now is to 
allow yourself because we know that Jesus Christ himself is the baptizer of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, and of fire. Therefore, him being the baptizer of the Holy Spirit and fire, you need the Spirit of God. You need the fire of God. I did a, a, a video as well about it. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Not only you get this fire so that you will be, you 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 you, you just prove to, to Nebuchadnezzar that you have the fire so that you will be able to stand the fires of this world. There's many things that are the fires of this world that come across as something else or they are, that they, are, they are in the form of something else. But really, they are burning your flesh and then you are able, when you are baptized in the fire of Jesus, baptized in the fire of God, you are able to stand the fires of this world. Hallelujah. We see also, glory to God. We see also that this fire is an operation. We see God. We see Abraham being counted a righteous man because he believed God. Where did that begin? It started um, with, uh, with, with God testing Abraham. Of course, I don't think that's what he said to Abraham, that he was testing Abraham when he told him to go and sacrifice his son. Oh, this icon is kind of... Um, when is uh, he, he never told him that it was a test, but he told him that uh, go and sacrifice your son. Sacrificing your son or doing a sacrifice is got everything to do with fire. Once again, in, in, in case you're trying to understand what I'm talking about here, it is again, it is about uh, the effectiveness, the, the call that you have been called into, the talents that you've been called into, the gifting that you've been called into by God. In order for you to be effective, you must be touched by the fire of God. In case you are wondering why others are still prospering, even though they have not been touched by the fire of God, I told you, I, I said it yesterday, because it is the grace of God that makes them, give them effectiveness. Hallelujah. It's not them that are in operation, but it is the gift that's in operation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's the gift that's in operation. It's not them at all. Take them, these people that are operating this way, out of the equation because it is the gift of God. So it means that's God himself operating in these people because they never gave themselves gift. They have nothing to do with the gifts that are on, on the inside of them. So you cannot credit the gift that they are using to themselves. You can only credit those gifts to God. Yes, they may be prospering. They may, it may look like they are prospering, but there is a discrepancy when there's prosperity without the prosperity of the soul. The real authentic prosperity is the prosperity of your soul. Then it comes in line like this. It goes together. There will be a prosperity of your soul, and then there will also be a prosperity of everything else concerning you. Hallelujah. So we see that uh, uh, Abraham there is being tested by with his son to go and sacrifice his only son, Isaac. Hallelujah. He even says, the son that whom you love so much. You know, basically God is saying that if I have to translate it to the New Testament, hallelujah, in, in the book of Romans chapter 12, he says, present your body a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Which is a reasonable sacrifice unto God. Be transformed by the renewing of the mind and do not conform to the patterns of the world because the patterns of the world they will contaminate you. It will look like it's working out but it is not working out until you are fully in God. So we see now that the fire now is that is being used again then when Abraham is about to, 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 to sacrifice his son that was his call to be to be a man of faith. We're learning everything about faith through Abraham. Hallelujah. That, that very that very action that God instructed him to do in Genesis 22. Hallelujah. That he needed to go and sacrifice the son. That also involves the fire. Even though the fire was not fully in operation. Hallelujah. Actually, it ended up being in full, in full operation because God produced the lamb. God produced the ram and, you know, showed up with the ram to put him in the fire. 
the, and the son was spared. In case you're wondering, the one who loses their soul to please God, they will gain their life. The one who, 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 who keeps his life, I can't remember what that scripture it says, that what, what it says verbatim, but what it, what it means is it says that uh, uh, the one who loses his life will gain it and the one who gains his life, who wants to gain his life will lose it. So we see that uh, that Abraham was about to lose his own life because lo losing your son in the fire or in death or in any kind of a catastrophe, it is got, it's got everything to do. Uh, with uh, losing yourself uh, because your son is your blood so it's not it's got nothing to do with uh, anything else but it's got to do with you making yourself a sacrifice because the son may feel the pain physically but the person that's going to feel the pain more is the father or the mother so we see now there's fire in operation and we also see that uh, there's fire as well in operation when God was calling Moses hallelujah there was a burning bush that just suddenly showed up hallelujah you see Moses that he had been living all this life for, for so many years he lived a luxurious life in Egypt having been adopted in Egypt hallelujah but we see a few years later many years later actually that uh, he he received a call from God through the burning be, be, burning bush so we see the be, the bush burning there that's still the fire involved there hallelujah so this show, this shows us and there's many other things here that are mentioning about the fire but really what I want to I, I, I want to point out to you or emphasize to you is the fire Hallelujah of the Holy Spirit because Matthew chapter 3 verse 11 hallelujah according to Jesus according to John he says he says repent for the kingdom of God is at hand he says and then he goes on to say I think that's verse 11 he says I indeed baptize you with water really everything else actually starts with repentance I actually started right there everything else starts with repentance because you cannot receive actually the fire that I'm talking about without actually getting into a place it is first things first in order for you to receive the fire in order for yourself so that you will operate in your call and your gift effectively you need to repent i know the repentance word is a curse word where i am but it is not a curse word but it is for your deliverance it is for your moving forward in life the word the repentance it actually precedes your greatness in order for you to get to a place of greatness you've got to repent hallelujah i know people don't want to hear the repentance but it's a necessity for us to know to continually preach about repentance yes you may not like it the reason you don't like it is because your flesh does not like it because the flesh wants to continue indulging itself in the things that are not of god but god is saying come out of that flesh and come into the spirit of the living god hallelujah glory to god and then we see matthew chapter 3 verse 11 then and he says, John is saying that I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Hallelujah. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I am, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Hallelujah. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He's the one who's going to cool you down. You don't have to worry about, about the fire that you're going to be receiving from God sometimes I get hit by the fire but it's himself that still that still you know um that cools me down when I'm in the fire even when I'm in the fire of the world he cools me down with the fire hallelujah of the Holy Spirit and then he goes on to say his winnowing fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly he says he will thoroughly clean Clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, and he will burn up the shaft with unquenching fire. So basically, we see that what the fire does that the fire doesn't just show up just for the sake of showing up, it comes to clean up. The fire comes to remove that which is not of God. 
The fire comes to remove that which is not going to get you to a place where you think you are going as a born again believer. The once saved, always saved doctrine is deception. You got to remember that and always remember that. That if you are to die this very second, not knowing exactly where you're going to spend eternity, or you may think you're going to spend eternity at a place where you think you are going, but if you have not, you have not repented, you have not received the fire that removes all the impurities from Jesus, you will not make it, my brother and my sister. Let me tell you that now. That's just how it is. We also see in Matthew chapter 25 uh, that uh, the, the, the people, because what I'm talking about here is the gift and the talents. So the gift and the talents, those that did not use the gift and the talents according to God, they, the, the one that had one talent, they were thrown into the hellfire. This is why I do this video. This is why I, 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 I am called to help people to discover their purpose. Discovering their purpose is not just for the sake of discovering discovering the purpose. It's also to get you out of poverty. It's also to get you out of lack. It's also to get you out of uh, uh, eating from hand to mouth. It's also to get you out of uh, what is not pleasing to you. What does not glorify God. It doesn't just, uh, it's not just for the sake of just, uh, because we see these days, people, they get dipped, dipped into the water, they get baptized, but they continue living the life they are living. I don't know how they even do that. I'm not sure how they do that. Because I, I do believe the reason people are able to do that, because they literally ignore the spirit of God. But this is not a judgmental, a judgmental thing. Thing to anybody but this is just to point out what the fire does the fire will remove every impurity that which is not of God the fire will remove the impurities for the impurities they they don't allow you to get to a place where you need to be in life it continually you continually do the same thing over and over again you continually going through cycles in life you are trying to figure out what is going on why am i why my life is like this why why am i not prospering why am i not you know this and this and that all the things that are not desirable to yourself you don't like to see in your life this is what the fire does. The fire removes it, remove every impurity so that you can serve God. And part of serving God, hallelujah, is to discover your purpose. Because you're not just saved for nothing, you're saved to serve. If you think you're saved just for you to, to get to heaven, that is an error. You gotta correct that doctrine. It's a false doctrine. You are not saved to just make it at the gates of heaven. No, no, no. That's deception. Don't believe that lie anymore. You gotta get to a place where you need to. You gotta do it by force, remembering that the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent are ought to take it by force because there's a violent on the other side opposing the kingdom of God that suffers the violence. Hallelujah. But you also have been empowered by God to take it by force, that which belongs to you. And that which belongs to you is your purpose, is your calling, is your assignment, is your gifting. Use them according to God. Like I said, that it is the fire that makes all the difference. As long as you don't have this fire, as long as you have not been baptized with this fire, according to Matthew chapter 3, 11, if you are only baptized in the water, it is not enough. It was not enough to have been baptized in the water. You need the Holy Spirit and fire in order for yourself to operate fully and comprehensively in God. Then you will get to a place where you think you are going. It's one thing going to a place it's one thing, it's another thing making it there. You may be thinking you're going to a place, but as long as you are not going the right direction according to the stipulations of who, of the one who has, uh, uh, who, who has, uh, you know, set up the road, as long as you don't use those, uh, those, those, uh, you know, whatever that he has said, you may not make it there. So what I want to say to you today is that today you need that fire. And of course, like I said before, that uh, this fire is actually preceded by, hallelujah, repentance, the change of mind. Repenting for the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God requires 
righteousness. Righteousness, what is righteousness? Is believing God. Believing God, consequently, you comply with his word. What is his word saying about righteousness? He says, Abraham believed God and he was counted a righteous man. And we also hear that the kingdom of God is not food or drink, but joy, peace, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. So righteousness is a necessity. It is something that you need to do. It's not something that you can do in your own strength. No, you cannot do that because you are a human being. This is why none of us have any ability to present ourselves to God. Because if we try to present ourselves to God, having been born in sin, we will not make it. This is why God made a way through Jesus Christ that he sent to die on the cross for us that we may live hallelujah he died he rose again is coming back in order for you to be made righteous you gotta believe what god did raising jesus christ from the dead and then how do you get saved you get saved by confessing that jesus christ is your lord that is partially repentance and repentance has got everything to do with changing your mind let that 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 mind that was in Christ also be in you. So because when you begin to think according to the mind of Christ, you will be like Christ. You eventually heading towards the way of being like Christ. Hallelujah. So all you have to do is to confess and believe. The Bible says you shall be saved. Glory to God. So what, what I'm going to do with you right now is to help you help you recite. The reciting is not just the reciting for the sake of reciting. Is the repetition, is the confession. You're not even repeating. You could, you're repeating so that you can say the right words, but it's the confession that Jesus Christ is your Lord. Hallelujah. So as long as uh, you don't do this, you're trying to get righteousness in your own way, you will not make it to where God is. And you will not be able to use the talents and the gifts and the callings that God has put on the inside of you. And unfortunately, according to Matthew 25, based on the, on the uh, uh, parables of the talents, you will be thrown into the hellfire because you haven't even applied the gifts that God has entrusted you with. Of course, like I said, it starts with repentance. Repenting changing your mind remembering as well that john 1 12 says those who, who, who believed in his name they were given the power to be the children of god it's a power thing to be the child of god it's a privilege it's an entitlement not everybody is the child of god unless you believe in his son hallelujah that he sent to die for us hallelujah then you are not entitled to be at a place where you think you are you think you are the child of god no you are not i said it to this other young man the other day he had his eyes wide open i said no you are not because you don't even believe right your belief is not right it's distorted hallelujah so i'm going to help you today god is going to help you through me to confess jesus christ as your lord and as your savior and the bible says you shall be saved repeat with your lips out loud and your heart open that's the confession like i said it is unto confession you are saved is also unto believing you are made righteous say father i thank you for sending your son to die for me to die for my sins i repent of my sins forgive me father for all the wrongdoings I have done, knowingly and unknowingly, consciously and unconsciously, deliberately and not deliberately, I repent of my sins, O oh God. Forgive me, Father. You said in your word, when I confess my sins, you are faithful to forgive me. Father, I thank you for forgiving my sins. From today, I will walk in righteousness. I will walk in my gifting and my callings. I will walk in that which you have called me to walk in. I will not be like that the, 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 um, the woman who was given a talent and hid it somewhere and ended up going to hell. I will use the talents you have called me for. I will use the purpose and the gifts you have given to me. I ask you to forgive me. I receive your forgiveness. From today, I am saved by the blood of Jesus. I am born again. 
I am born of the Spirit of God. I receive the Holy Spirit. I will go to heaven one day. I will enter the kingdom of heaven. While I am here on earth, I will understand the things of the kingdom and the things of the Spirit. I will not live for myself anymore. I will live for God the Father. I will live for Jesus Christ. I will be led by the Spirit of God. From today, I am saved. I'm born again. I'm forgiven. I receive Jesus as my Lord and as my Savior. And I ask you, Father, what ambassador was talking about today to receive the fire, to be baptized in the fire in order to operate in my gifts and my calling like Abraham started operating in the in righteousness. <clears throat> he had to <clears throat> be tested by the fire. Also, um, Moses had to be tested by the fire. Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior that I have just received, I receive him because he also is baptizing me with his fire. Father, I receive your fire. Baptize me with your fire in the name of Jesus so that I will no longer yield to the things of the world, that the fires of the world will no longer burn me up, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, baptize me. Put your hand, your head on the top of your head and let the fire of God touch you in the name of Jesus. Now be baptized baptized by the fire of God in the name of Jesus. Let that which is not of God be removed and never to return in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your fire. Baptize us, O oh God, afresh we pray in Jesus. Hallelujah. Christ, mighty name. O oh, Father, fill us with your Holy Spirit, O oh God, that, Lord, we will do. We will be witnesses, O oh God. Part of being a witness, O oh God, God is also, hallelujah, to walk in our call and purpose. I thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, I receive everything you have for me. I don't miss not even one in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll talk soon.